Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Mandy and we're gonna do a bloom on this 12 inch MDF round. I'm just uh, spreading my pillow paint out a little bit um, so that if I spend too long popping bubbles or whatever, um, the pillow doesn't get a ring because sometimes it dries a little bit and then gets a little bit of a ring. So there's golden teal. I'm using up some paints I've had mixed up for a while. And I am doing a voiceover to speed this up because I will tell you, um, this first one, I guess my paints were too thick or my pillow was too thick. I don't know what went wrong, but it's the weirdest blowout I've ever had. My cell activator was fresh. Um, but it just, you'll see. So I wanted to share it with you because um, I had to modify the colors a little bit for the second part, but... This is a uh, Nebula Star from Color Art. It's a gorgeous color. I had to thin it down because I've had it mixed up for a really long time, like months. But it's a beautiful color. So I went and kind of looked for some colors that would go together that I had mixed up for a while. because I need to use up some colors instead of just continuing to mix up new colors. I'm so bad about that. I have drawers and drawers in my little cart of colors mixed up with a little bit left in them. And um, I need to be better about using them before I mix up more. But because I thinned this down a little bit with a jo little Josonia water and a drop of water or so, it had a lot of bubbles. And so for some reason, when I did this painting, it had a lot of bubbles, period. So that's a Matisse Southern Ocean Blue, uh, one of my favorite colors from Matisse. And um, so I'm just, again, I've had that one mixed up for a little bit too. And I wanted to make sure I had a couple of acrylic colors in here. And um, I decided to still include this so you can kind of see what I was going for. That's Cupid's Crush from Color Art. It is a glitz color from the Primary Elements Glitz Collection. The glitz colors are super sparkly and they're semi-opaque. And I love them. And... This is Huckleberry, also from the Glitz collection. That one was a little thick. I think you saw as I um, took it out, <laughs> it was a little too thick. So watching this, I can kind of see why I run into the trouble I, I did. I probably should have thinned some of those down a little bit. But Huckleberry is really, really beautiful. I love the shade of the purplish blue. And next up is Tempted Tulip, also from the Glitz Collection, one of my favorites. And that's also a little thick. So I really should have been a little bit more conscientious of how thick my paint was and thinned it down a little bit. I always keep a little bottle of three parts Josonia to one part water to thin down paints that have gotten too thick. Um, but, you know, you learn. Consistency is super important with blooms. So if something's too thick or too thin, it can really mess things up. So you kind of learn that through trial and error. I also have way too much pillow paint on here. That's Violet Rose, which is one of the new Prism Pour colors. I normally mix my Prism Pour with my pouring medium. But I saw Tomoko just do it right out of the bottle. And with this new Prism Pour formula, it's just really outstanding. And so I thought hers bloomed really well. So I was like, I'm going to try it. That color is Southern Ocean Blue again. Because if I can just use it right out of the bottle, I can add it easily to anything I'm, I'm doing for blooms, kind of like I do boom gel, and that makes it super easy to use. And it's got such gorgeous color that if you can just add it, it's amazing. I had significant bubbles so I was trying to pop them. I'm going to use a Gram Lamp Black Cell Activator. Gram is the brand of the paint and I really really like it as a cell activator. It gives me those small cells that I like. I'm going to put my head right in the way just kind of expanding the target a little bit. Now here you see it's not moving and I know right when I get this far that this is going to be a flop, but I'm trying to figure out, like, why isn't it moving, you know? 
and you can see all of those places. You can see the potential for it to be really pretty, but it the cell activator was fresh. It was thin enough to move, but it wasn't like the paint was thick. This pillow paint has been um, in a cup for a little bit, so super thick maybe, but a total flop. So we're going to pour over it coming up next. Um, I just wanted to show you how weird this was. <laughs> Okay, so let's try this again. So I've sped this up a little bit for the sake of time, but I have my pillow down. That was a super weird pour. I've never had paint not move like that. I think maybe my pillow just thickened up too much. So this is Mally Ringneck Blue Boom Gel. I'm going to have to change up the colors a little bit because I used, I used up the rest of the colors or some of those colors. This is... Huckleberry, I think, which is a glitz color. It's a beautiful color. And so I just used the rest of that one up. I did notice that my colors had so many bubbles, and I don't know if it's just because I had to thin them down, um, but I spent so much time popping bubbles. It's insane. So... Sorry about the excess time there. I got to figure out what's causing that. I may have put too much gel gloss in my last mix, but some of these were mixed up a long time ago, so it can't just be that. I know the Joe Sonia water mix does produce bubbles because Joe Sonia causes bubbles, but it's insane how many bubbles I've had in my last couple paintings. So, um... This one turns out better than the last one, but still not a great blowout for me. Um, but I still wanted to share with you guys. So I significantly sped up the process of the other one. This is Interference Gold and Interference Blue Sparkle. Uh, Royal Sapphire Prism Pour. Now normally I mix my Prism Pour with my pouring medium, but I saw Tomoko just spread it out on one of her blooms and it blew out great. So I was like, I'm going to try that because if it works great like that, I can kind of use it like a boom gel, just put it on the bloom and I don't have to waste time mixing it with the pouring medium. This is Cupid's Crush again. I had a little bit left, so I used most of what was left in there. Again, bubbles. So many bubbles. I will figure that out. And this is Tempted Tulip, another of my favorite of the glitz colors. Cupid's Crush is another one. They're both glitz from the glitz collection from Primary Elements. And the glitz collection is semi-opaque. So they're a lot of fun to use if you're not used to using Primary Elements and you like to use the pigments and blooms that that and the bling it colors are really a lot of fun to use again popping bubbles i'm a professional bubble popper now not really because i didn't get them all but i would have been seriously there all day so this is violet rose another of the new prism pour colors now when i say i'm using this right out of the bottle this is the newest colors that have the updated formula and used up the rest of my Southern Ocean Blue. From Matisse. More bubbles. I think I also might stir too quickly when I'm trying to get things ready to pour. I probably just stir too fast and introduce air and bubbles into the pour. So now we're going to use our Graham Lamp Black Cell Activator. Graham is a brand of acrylic paint, and I really like using it, the, at least the black one, as a cell activator. Now, because I spent so much time popping bubbles, I really should have spread this pillow out earlier but I didn't because um, sometimes if you take too long it starts to dry just a little bit and you get a ring 
that shows in your painting. It's not a big deal, but it does show and it shows under resin too. So popping more bubbles, it's probably why I spread that out. Now I'm going to get right in the middle of this with my head and try to expand this a little bit. I normally use a cell activator that is thicker. So this one moves really well when you blow on it. So I basically am just enlarging the target. The only thing I had trouble with this cell activator is it's thin and the rest of my paint is not. And so it doesn't seem to like gather the paint underneath it very well without going down into the pillow like I just did. Um, so the middle looks great, but you can see I've messed up some areas where it didn't quite spread out. I also need to um, learn to start with a smaller puddle and kind of instead of blowing the petal of the bloom out all the way to the edge I need to just kind of be happy with the bloom in the center and then let it spin out and create what it's gonna I think sometimes I mess up the composition by trying to blow it out too far instead of let it spread on its own which is kind of what the pillow is supposed to do is help it spread out so now I'm just trying to blow out some places where I didn't do a great job blowing it out. The colors are spectacular together. The composition is better than the first one, which wouldn't take much. That was terrible. Um, but the composition needs some work. I do try to, you know, mess with it and make it work. My husband said it was gorgeous. He, he said, I don't know why you don't like it. And all the places where I blew into the pillow where I thought it really looked disastrous, he said he liked the way the white looked. So he probably saved it from being scraped. Um, I love the colors together. I just, the composition was less than desirable. So um, where the white parts are, I'm trying to uh, make them less noticeable by kind of either pulling color in or swirling around where some of that white will still show, which helped a lot except for one area that I didn't think did very well. A lot of it does kind of spin off, but I mean, I love the colors together. If I could get this right, <laughs> it would be great. I've made some coasters with similar colors and they're really beautiful. The colors are just deep and rich and bold. And um, so, but this is why we practice, right? So um, I was not having a great painting day this day. And I have those often, <laughs> unfortunately. So it comes with the territory, I suppose. So all I'm doing now is trying to make some of that work where I know it's going to spin out and some of those white parts are going to expand. And they sure did. Look at that. And so I like that little curly part, but it's too, it, it draws your eye too close to that swirl there. So here I'm just popping a couple bubbles because a bunch surfaced as I blew that out. I think some of that also has to do with the fact that I use way too much paint. So I'm trying to get that weird swirly cue to the edge so that it doesn't, because it's the first thing I notice when I look at it. Now it's not so bad because it's on the edge. So there's a couple places where the white is really noticeable to me. Um, but like on the top left hand corner, that looks like a fish hook. I didn't do the greatest job of maneuvering that one around. And unfortunately, now that it's all blown out, there's not a lot I can do to save that. I do try to fix it a little bit but you know for a practice one I think this will still look really beautiful under resin still really beautiful colors um so like I said I asked my husband because I kind of need a second opinion because sometimes you're too close to it and you see it and you're like ugh. but if I saw someone else paint it I might think it was gorgeous so and I I can come back sometimes and edit a video where I scraped something and I'll look at the painting and be like, 
it wasn't that bad, you know, but in the moment I was disgusted with it, you know, so sometimes you need fresh eyes to um, maybe not be so critical of your own work. And I think part of where we struggle as bloomers when you're doing this technique is we think every successful painting is a perfect bloom and those don't happen that often and so we sometimes have to embrace where the cells and lacing don't come out the way we want or the composition is off center or you have you know the pillow comes through or you know all of the things that happen all of the time you know and sometimes you think you have to learn to work with them and one of the things I learned by watching other artists is how to make those parts of your painting work instead of scraping and scraping and scraping and waiting till you get a perfect blowout every time because you're not always going to get that. And sometimes those ones that you kind of embellish some of those weird places and um, they turn out to be really cool looking and they have a lot of character and they have they're very abstract looking. And so um, I think sometimes we just have to embrace those pieces. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I've got a close up coming up for you. And thanks for watching my first flop um, and hanging out this long. Close up coming up next. All right, everybody. So here's our close up. Some disaster, some beauty, but the colors are amazing. Look at the beautiful colors. Don't forget, um, you can save 20% by using my code for color art, anything on the website, Mandy1120, all lowercase. Those new beautiful prism pour colors are outstanding. And um, I also use some boom gel in here, so don't forget that you can save 15% off of boom gel, Australian Floetrol, using Mandy15 in all caps from Pixel Paint Designs. Both of those are listed below. You can see some of the bubbles I'm up against when I get close here. Um, and some of them popped as it dried. Um, I tried to pop the ones that would show the pillow, but I got to figure out why I was getting so many bubbles. Maybe I just need to calm down when I'm stirring. But I love those colors together. They're so beautiful. So let me know what you think in the description box below. Uh, do you agree with my husband who saved this painting? Um, I appreciate you guys very much. If you're new, please like and subscribe. And um, I promise not all of the paintings are a mess. Um, but thank you for all your continued support, everyone. And thanks again for watching. Stay safe out there and have a wonderful day. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. I love the center of it. Have a great day.